let's talk. Have you ever felt like you must do something because of how your friends would react? Of course you have. Rather it be a new craze that your friends have hopped onto or a new word, dance, or fad. One time or another, you've been forced to do something even if you are not. It's called peer pressure. I know you've probably heard the term before, but in case you haven't, let me introduce to you commercial pressure. Commercial pressure is when you feel pressure to buy something because you do not have that product or service. But why is this important? Well, it can be used in a lot of other ways that will change your mind on the control that advertising can have on our lives. Companies need a steady stream of income and know how to secure routine purchases for their success. It's like a psychological trigger. An ad that pops up on your computer or TV can affect a whole nation into changing their diets over time. And about how words and labels can make people unaware of what they're buying into, and how ecosystems can harm individuals through exclusivity. The need for a quick, hearty breakfast has been a national issue for decades. Why? Breakfast is the most important meal of the day, right? But when did this come to be? Where did this phrase come from? Well, you'll be shocked to find out it wasn't from a clinical study or an old wives' tale trying to get kids to eat their breakfast. It was because of advertising. Mr. Alex Mayasi notes, what is commonly less mentioned is the origin of this ode to breakfast, a 1944 marketing campaign launched by General Foods, the manufacturer of grape nuts, to sell more cereal during the campaign. Ready on advertisements announced that nutrition experts say breakfast is the most important meal of the day. Surprising, right? People look for the easy solution and end up tattooing a new phrase onto American society. Cereal companies struck gold with these ads. The brand noticed, and once they found their solution, it evolved into a common stock through generations of American families. Adversely, the high-carb diets began to take a toll, and they looked for a solution. But to cut down their prices and to make more money, over the years they ended up stuffing starches and processing their food, which in turn made their sales grow even more. But why did it make their sales skyrocket? Newer generations wanted high sugar foods, which they provided. Only about 10 years ago, people started to notice this as organic food became a whole separate section of the American food industry. This, the general American population, wanted big hearty meals to fuel themselves throughout the day. But was this necessary for good health? This grew to the modern day epidemic of fatty cereal plaguing today's pantries. It became a problem because cereal slowly became more and more unhealthy. It became a problem because cereal slowly became more and more unhealthy. Originally, they were healthier and they were lighter and they had more nutrients like grape nuts, wheat and nut, raisin brain, and Malta Vita, to name a few. Few recognize these cereal brands anymore, right? While scientific studies have done to figure out what factors impacts giving breakfast has, the idea itself is based on half-truths and misleading marketing strategies. Let's talk about eggs. This product, like many others, is a controversial topic when it comes to food. But why? Two words. Living conditions. Recently, concerned consumers have uncovered the shocking truth about mislabeling. If you were to purchase a carton of eggs labeled free range, you might be led to think the chickens have been able to range freely. Not so. From Colorado Spice Blending Company, it's up to the manufacturer to set their standards for what constitutes a vegetarian egg, for example, and what about pasture range eggs? It's also not regulated by the USDA and farmers have no restrictions. A conventional egg also has no rules. 
and the chances of conventional eggs spreading harmful diseases like salmonella, it is seven times more likely as they are stacked in cages and given antibiotics. My friend and her family had salmonella poisoning before by eating conventional eggs. It seems like there are a wide range of options, but in reality, the labeling and marketing is misleading. The most humane egg in this product example is the organic egg, unlike to your belief. But pasture raised seems like it would be more healthy. Corporations have become experts at promoting misleading packaging to manipulate you into buying their product. Isn't it a shame that some companies are more interested in revenue than the morality of their flock and the trust of their customers? Apple is a company that has seen its rise in success and surprised others in its tactics. One of those ways they have risen and separated themselves is through the Apple ecosystem. I will explain that later, but for now, let me show you an example. Imagine there are two tribes, Apple users and non-Apple users. This is great for Apple because at one hand, they get no money from a non-Apple user, but if somebody decides to join the tribe of Apple users to stay up to date with their products, they must spend a lot more money than a non-Apple customer, which does not feel commercial pressure to purchase the latest products from their preferred seller. This is by many regarded as the Apple ecosystem. The Apple ecosystem is a family of products that has a huge bubble around them blocking any access into it. Apple has slowly reduced all of its features to other users beyond the bubble. Other users must pay whether it to be to enter the ecosystem or to continue being a part of the ecosystem. Releasing new phones and devices every year entices customers to keep up with the trend and stay up to date. But this can be harmful to society because people believe that having the new thing is necessary to be cool, putting commercial pressure on individuals. The biggest example being Beats, a luxury headphone line brought up by Apple. But as the years went on, Beats failed in the business world. Apple's audio products value raised due to the fact that Apple's software and design were simple and made people buy the product instantaneously. For example, their biggest app available to non-Apple users besides Apple TV is moved to iOS, an easy way to get into their ecosystem and fulfill their societal goals. It is a smart idea as billions of solutions are out there to get exclusive Apple content onto your non-Apple devices. But this smart marketing ploy on Apple's part harms the candy bowl of the ecosystem and makes it seem rotten as old products pass. My goal isn't to convince you to stop purchasing Apple products or organic eggs or grape nuts. My, my goal is to encourage consumers to consider researching manufacturers' claims and to heighten awareness of not following into the marketing scams and societal trends.